All right, all right, all right. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, here they come. Um, can you guys hear me okay? <laughs> um, sorry, you're gonna. It's gonna be loud. Beatrice forgot that I'm starting right now. We have a new dog. We adopted a new dog to be best friends with Beetlejuice. His name is Tank. And he is there having so much fun. And they were wrestling upstairs and it sounded like a herd of elephants. So I guess, I guess Beatrice uh, is taking them outside so they'll be quiet. So, so everyone can hear me okay. You can see my mouse and you can see my avatar. Yes, yes, yes. So, how is everyone doing? I enjoyed a few minutes in the chat. I thought that was great. I don't often get to chat with you guys because I'm running the machine. So, okay, yeses, everyone saying yeses. So, I hope everyone is keeping safe. I hope everyone is keeping busy. Dawn and I have been trying to, uh, you know, because our business is hurting too, just like everyone else's. So we've been trying to get out more mug rugs for you guys to stitch and have fun. Gail Tip says, Yippee, yippee for you adopting. Yeah, we wanted a, a friend for Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice has a lot of energy. And uh, the dog's name that we got is Tank. And Tank is gorgeous. He's three years old and he is a treeing walker coonhound, which I had never heard of before. But anyways, this is, uh, we got him yesterday, believe it or not. And he is adorable. They're having fun. So if you hear noise more than normal, that's because it's only Tank's like second day. So are we ready to get started? Are we ready to get started? I Someone said up there that, uh, do we have a picture of Tank? I will post a picture, or maybe if Don's listening, he'll post a picture on the uh, in the group. I think that would be fun. So first of all, I'd like to say welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. I'm hoping these digitizing classes get a little more popular. We are kind of short on views. So we're going to kick it up a little bit. We're still doing a bookcase, but we're going to kick it up a little bit. So here's mine. I just played around. Um, and if you go on right now, omlembroidery.com and you go to the shop button, you will see this bookcase uh, for free. Don made it for you guys. Um, Oh, thank you, Karina. Thanks for all the great work you were doing. You're welcome. Thanks for helping. Thanks all the mods for helping. I couldn't do it without you guys. So this shelf with lots of beautiful design, decorating and really nicely done is free for you guys. So just hop out and get that whenever you want. Um, it'll stay free. It's something that Dawn did. And I thought this would be a great inspirational uh, starting point for it because you can put now you can put books in it too you should put books in it I didn't because we already did um, a class on that so we can just add your own books you can add you could change the colors of this if you want but I think oh Gail tips keep it up thank you very much Don just posted the link to it so it's free now believe it or not all of these designs are from shapes, but this time what we're going to do is just, you know, manipulate the shapes. But we're going to start off the circles, ovals, and these are rectangles. That's obviously lettering. It's not a shape, but I thought that's cool. This is like a, a quilt hanging, which I thought would be really cool to do. We haven't done that, but uh, neat. And of course, a plant with this nice detail work on it and so a vase or two or three, whatever you want. So let's get started. I'm going to keep on this page. Actually, I should copy the piggy 
So let's, I right click, or you can do control C, control V, but I'll just right click for it because no reason, <laughs> just no reason. And we're going to scroll over just a smidge and we're going to make this cute piggy bank. Now, remember, I'm only doing basics uh, on this. You can add details. You can put a little swirly tail. You can make them longer this way. It's supposed to be a piggy bank. So there you go. <laughs> it's supposed to be a piggy bank. I just thought that was cute. I was trying to think of different things that you would put on a bookshelf other than books. And that's what I, I thought, a piggy bank. Everyone has a piggy bank somewhere. So let's start off with this guy. Oh, I should say, before we get to the good stuff, uh, I'm working in uh, PEP software. It's software from Dime, and it's Perfect Embroidery Professional Software. But you can do any of the stuff that I'm doing uh, with your own software. You don't have to have this. If you want a demo version of it, um, you can't stitch it out, but you can still play around. You can go to inspiredbydime.com and uh, just grab a free version of it if you want to follow along. But I'm only using shapes, running stitch, uh, fill stitch, and satin stitches. So you guys should be able to do all of this in any digitizing software, any digitizing. So P Design 10 people are using, Ember people are using, there's Hatch people are using. So whatever you want, that is what we need to do. Ooh, thank you. Ronag Paulson, thank you very much. We appreciate it. You're quiet, but you're always here, which is nice. Also, Ronag won one of the uh, I need a good design thing. So when you get stitching it, we want to see it. Isabel Briand, thank you very much. Bravo. That guy's really cute. Really cute. Oh, Jeff Chandler. Hey, you're here. Uh, you've been knocking it out of the park with your designs. Up. Uh, yes, he has. Now this fits into this whole shelf fits into a six by six hoop. I asked Don to make it a little bit bigger so we can have some uh, more detail stuff in it. And I thought that would be great. So, okay, any questions? Any questions? Don't, don't compliment Don. He's going to get a fat head. Look at his answer. Well, thank you all, LOL. <sighs> I'll never hear the end of it. Never. Right, Don? Don's upstairs. He can hear me. He's just ignoring me. So Chris Yost, thank you very much. Thank you. That is a cute, what is it? A lemon? I don't know what it is, but it's cute. I like the heart moving heart eyes. Thank you very much, Chris Yost. I appreciate it. So hi, Sue Brown. I still love you too. Ah, good answer, Jeff. Good answer. I just chose it as an opportunity to give Dawn a hard time because, you know, why not? So let's start with Mr. Piggy and let's start with shapes. So find the shapes on your software. In this software, Perfect Embroidery Professional or Perfect Embroidery Pro, or simply just PEP. Uh, I really like it. I've been having so much fun in the software, plus all the add-ons to the right-hand side. You guys know I love the My Lace Maker. It's so much fun. So let's start with a shape. So we're going to start with a circle. So I'm going to pull out the circle and I'm going to hold the control key so it is equal. So we're going to put it there. Hey, that's dandy. Can you guys see it? It's a little bit faded down there. All right. So we're going to leave that for now. It's an outline. So we know it is um, just a shape because when I click on it, it says outline. And if you look down here, it says artwork. So the zero after it means um, zero stitches. So this isn't stitches, it's just a line. So that's about the size for our piggy. Let's do his ears now. So I'm gonna get the tool in hand. And what I did was just elliptical. 
So I didn't hold down the control key. I just uh, just pulled it out to make it an oval. Grab the little X here. Now you can see you could do a little teddy bear easily. So I just tilt it around like that. So I thought it looked good. You can adjust it. I didn't for my piggy guy, and I think he looks just, just dandy. Just cute as a button, a piggy button. So then I am Sandy Ackery. Thank you very much. You are amazing. You are amazing. We really appreciate the donations. I know everybody is having such a difficult time. Uh, the world is changing and it's really strange. I'm going to keep doing the same thing with and for you guys. At least twice a week, you can have a big smile on your face and learn something. Maybe just, you know, keep everything normal for us all. So that is amazing. Is there a question? Someone said, Cindy King, I asked that in the Facebook group. Suzanne Shep. What did you ask, Suzanne? I could scroll back. Oh, I don't want to waste too much time. Tell me. Tell me, someone tell me so I can answer. So this looks pretty good angle. Look at how I matched that. Woohoo. Um, pretty good angle. Don't worry about being perfect. This is not what this is. Control C, Control V for my second ear. Now that looks kind of kooky. So let's flip this from side to side. That looks better. That looks way better. And you can place the ear wherever you want. Now we're just looking around the outside. Yeah, that's cute. Now they're not even, but that's okay. I have um, never seen, I've never seen a piggy with perfect ears. So I'm just going to leave it like that. You can if you don't like that, you can select the two of them. Remember, we try to use all of our tools and we're going to bottom align it. Now they are perfectly even and why not? So now let's work on the feet. Um, the feet are really simple, of course, and we're going to adjust them a little bit. So the feet are seriously just a rectangle. So I'm just going to do it and I'm just worried about the width here. Nothing else, just the width. And then we're going to make some adjustments to it. Whoa, I hit the alphabet instead. See, I told you I was tired. Sorry about that. I'm going to zoom right in so you guys can see what I'm doing a little bit better. And what I wanted to do is change the angle a bit. How about I change the color a bit first? Then you can, yeah, that's a little bit easier to see. And then I wanted, I didn't want it to look a little stiff here. See how I have kind of the angle and it looks a little bit better. That's kind of what I want. So let's go to the shaping tool, node mode, whatever you guys want. And look, I'm left clicking and dragging and I'm just going to put it up a little bit. Uh, normally I would put on my grid, but it makes it really hard for you guys to see. So I just adjusted that one and look how cool that is. So control C, control V and slide that one out and we're going to flip it. So flip horizontal. So make sure you guys can find that. Now I do want these ones to be even. So we're going to go ahead and do the bottom align. So uh, another thing I'm trying to do with these classes is to get you guys to use the tools that are available. Instead of trying to make a really complicated um, piggy that is hard to do. We'll just make simple ones and work up from there. You can add share, uh, shadowing on it. Like I said, you can make piggy longer. You could add a little swirly tail, whatever suits you. So, so far I'm going to take all of them. So I can't do a control A cause that mean it selects everything, but we're going to select all of our shapes. And what we want to do is make them into one shape. So I'm going to right click and shaping and weld. So find that in your software. Any digitizing um, software will have that, whether you're doing it with stitches or um, objects like I am. 
you should be able to weld everything. Now we've got an outline of a piggy. He's got short little piggy legs. He's a little bit different than this guy. So why don't we go ahead and convert to complex fill and fill our pig. Oh, I will do a blue pig because why not? Now you can do uh, a little more detail on the ears if you want, if you want to do two colors, or if you wanted to make it a little pointier, that would be easy to do either with the objects or um, with the stitches. Elaine Chapman, number one fan. Woo, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, okay, so let's do the detail work. Now, I didn't put too many details on this guy. I wanted to keep it simple. Uh, and he's cute as a button, so I thought, why not? So, oh, well, that's wrong. How about I delete that and look at the tool that I'm using because I have to select the ellipse. I have never, ever seen a piggy with a square nose. So, uh, ooh. Ooh, the Norseman. Thank you very much. Cute dog. I think that looks like Tank. That might look like Tank. Yes, yeah, so are you guys having... I heard from on, let's see, YouTube, whoever's in charge of YouTube, that they're going to be slowing down the videos um, so they won't be as high quality no matter what you upload them at because uh, there's so many people, so many people online doing it. So I'm going to control so I can constrain his nose and make it a lovely shaped nose. And you can put it down a bit lower or up. Hmm. I think I like it just like that. And I'm going to convert to complex fill. Now this one, the rest of it, we're going to leave it the same as, you know, we're not going to modify other than the legs. But you see how much better? The, these legs, the blue legs, look than this one. Uh, that's just changing, just moving up one point. That's it. You, you'll be surprised at what you can do with shapes. Shapes give you the, the start to it. So let's select that tool. And now we're going to, whoops, hold down the control. I'm going to make his little eyes a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to do one. And I'm going to convert it to, we should be able to do satin stitch because it's small enough, right? Yeah, and I think I want it uh, black, please and thank you. And I think that looks great. I think that's great. So we'll make that an eye. And of course, you could do pretty eyes. You could do any kind, like eyelashes on it, have the eyelashes stitch out first. Why not? So I'm going to do Control D, which is duplicate duplicate and then I'm just going to see my cursor turns into a, a cross and then I can just pick where I want and click. He's got a big snoot. Uh, I was a little careless in my pick and clicking there. So we'll move it. I think maybe those can go a little smaller, just a little bit. You don't want them too small because our piggy is uh, quite small. So you don't want to you don't want to do it too much, but I think these will show up quite nicely. And voila, you have a piggy. This piggy looks a little fatter than that piggy. <laughs> oh, well, that's okay. <laughs> that's fine. So let me find the group, 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 group. Control G is group. It just makes it easier for me to move stuff around. I'm going to delete that piggy. And uh, let's put our dudes on the shelf here. Let's see, pink piggy, he's kind of tippy piggy. Maybe because he's so full. And let's move this over. And this guy over. And let's put our new piggy there. And I like his feet way better. You see how good that looks? I mean, this one's okay. Like I said, you don't have to be perfect. I bet you none of you noticed that when we first started. But look, this one's much better. Just changing one thing. Ooh, Valerie Goldberg. Keep it up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Do you guys have any questions? You can add tusks. Sure, it could be a wild boar piggy bank. You can make any kind of animal you want. That's what we're going to be working on next. Um... 
doing different animals, not necessarily for a bookshelf, but definitely out of shapes. It's fine. So we'll do this one last. I just thought quilting would be really pretty. So let's look at this. It's a vase, a certain shape vase. You can look at any planters or anything that you have at home and we can copy it. So I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see. Now, this is an oval at the top and this, believe it or not, is a rectangle. That's all it is to do that. The blue pig is for big savings. Yes, because he's more sturdy. He is a little bit bigger. Um, I don't know if I like the eyes so big, but he's still so cute. And just that one little adjustment, perfect, perfect. Maud, welcome, welcome. We only just started. We just did a pig. So when we're done everything, you can go back and look. Ooh, I got to take a sip. It's dry in here. Ah, there we go. A little bit of ginger ale for my upset tummy. So a circle and a rectangle, believe it or not, and this is where you can have so much fun playing with, with shapes. Now, I'll do this a bit bigger so we can see it. So the top of the bottle is just a circle. You guys are going to love this one. And then we're going to, we are going to make it a little bit bigger. So we're going to kind of, I'll do it as big as that one. Now that's not centered properly, but that's okay. I don't often pull them out prop. I call it pulling out. Uh, I don't often do that. So we can do this one a little bit differently, but hmm, there we go. So there's your vase. It's square. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So what we want to do is dun 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 node mode and we are going to move stuff does anyone have any questions by the way anyone no okay then let's continue i'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you guys get a really good view of what i'm doing so i just put this beside so we can have some idea of what we're doing it's really easy so obviously we're gonna have to move this one in aren't we yes because there's no bottle that <laughs> looks like what i had so let's start off with that that looks like a beaker you could do that um we can add a point and you know you can do that on just about any software so if i had my grid on i'd be able to line up this point but i'm just gonna do it by eye uh add point and then i think uh oh it is a curve i was gonna say i think i'm gonna change it to a curve but it already is so here's where you can get you know groovy with it you can do you've seen vases that look like this you can dip it in and out. You can, you know, basically make any shape that you want. It's easy to do. See, that looks like an old fashioned milk container sort of thing. Now it doesn't look quite right. Let's make these guys even, um, or we can move it up or how about we add another one? So I'm going to right click add point and this will give us the curve that we want that's that's is all i'm doing is just playing around really cool if you can line up your points um but you don't have to i mean they're not perfect either do you want this see how we're doing it i think that's great so line up these guys i guess i could pull out guidelines if you wanted but it just makes everything harder to see, especially with YouTube making things slower. So I'll just leave it. We'll just do it by eye, because why not? I want to add another point, add point, and I'm just going to make it a little bit rounder. See how easy that is? It's, it's not hard. And I'm just going to fix my Bezier curves just a little bit. Um, it doesn't have to be square on the bottom, but we can. Let's see, go across to here, add point, pull it out a little bit, try to line stuff up. And again, I need to fix my Bezier curve. So I'm just grabbing a handle and making it kind of match. I like this side better than this side. Maybe, maybe 
Hmm. Either way, I guess. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know which looks more realistic. Maybe we can pull that in a little bit. Well, that looks worse. So it's just, I got it there. It's just a matter of playing around. So yeah, I like, but see how easy that is. These are nice curves there. Left looks better. Yeah, kinda. Now, if I had my grid, I would line it up a little bit better. But again, again, <laughs> you don't have to make it perfect. It's going to be way smaller than this. So the first thing that we have to do is merge the shapes. So we can shaping and we're going to weld. And now we have a bottle. I like how this part turned out. It's a little bit better than the other one. It's not quite even, but I like how this part turned out better than this one. I think the shape is much better. It's a little bit off, but you know what? Don't sweat it. Don't sweat it at all. But it was hand blown. It won't be a, the, then the vase won't be perfect. Yeah, that's why I said don't, don't mess around or don't get worried about the details of you know, the precision, it's good to be precise. It doesn't always have to be perfect though. Like remember the, the vase is going to be like two inches. So, you know, nobody's going to be putting their nose to the two inch vase and see if it's even, it's just not going to be. So that's one of the things I'd like everyone to learn is just kind of, you know, try stuff and stitch it out and see what you guys think. It's, um, you can't be, you can be picky, but not too picky. So let's see. Yeah, I kind of like it. I like the shape of this one, but uh, 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 I'm gonna make it smaller so it actually fits on the shelf. Um, it is pretty small, but you could always put, you know, a little, oh, it can go bigger. Ooh, let me make it at the size. I'm just gonna make it fit right there and bring it back and we can put a micro font on it if you want. You could make witches and spells and, you know, stuff like that for it. I think that would be, oops, I grabbed the wrong thing. Ooh, that's my mouse skipping. That's why, come on. There we go. Let's put the plant back, plant back. So wasn't that easy? See, now it, when you're standing back and looking at it, it doesn't look too far off. You can see it a little bit, but meh, who cares? These bottles, I just copied and pasted and made them different colors because I've always had shelves like that with different glass things on them. And uh, I like it. We can put this one up here for now. It's way up high. Maybe we'll make another one. So control D is for duplicate and maybe three on top. Why not? I love doing things on the fly, especially in this software, because there's so many things that, you know, I could sit and click the control D all day. I think it's so much fun to, to place everything. Let's add some colors. Let's match this maybe. Um, orange, where's my orange? Where's my orange? But you can, you know, go on the internet and you can maybe find some designs, you know, or sorry, photographs. Don't copy the photographs, but you can look at the shape of the vases. You could do like Roman vases with the handles on each side and maybe, you know, make it a little bit bigger um, for the top even and put a little bit of running stitch decoration on it. I, I think that would be cool. So do you want to do the quilting or do you want to do the plant next? Let's see what you guys think. Well, I take a little drink. Hey, I'm a poet. There we go. There we go. So the question is a quilt, hanging quilt or vase? Hanging quilt or vase? Vote, vote, vote. Plant, quilt, quilt. <laughs> I'm just reading them as they come up. Everybody doing okay and following along? Remember, you can get the, for those of you who are late joining, um, you can get the bookshelf as is. not None of this other stuff, but you can get the bookshelf for free. Brenda Riddle, yes, I will be doing both. 
All right, so quilt. Quilt one, I think. So you don't have to do this design. I think it's something like flying geese. But you can, you can take whatever quilting design that you really like and, and make it fit in. I guess I could put it like in the middle, maybe with some books or a book holder or something like that. But it's really easy to do. You can see this is like simple. And I thought it looked fantastic. Um, you could use fabric for the back of it. I would not suggest for the itty bitty teeny triangles. It's a uh, three by one and a half almost. So a little piece of fabric if you wanted. It is kind of small, but sometimes, sometimes that's pretty cool to do. So let's search for our triangles and I'm going to pull one out and I'm going to hold down the control key again to make sure it's the same size. Now there's tons and tons of triangles that you can do that are still triangles, but kind of different shapes. For example, you can squish it up and have, you know, more of a triangle like that, which is closer to what I did, but you can play around with it a little bit if you want. You could make an old, you know, an old fashioned style one that you want. It, it just depends on what, you know, your favorite one. You could make a square too, a square on each end. I think that would be cool. Just little wall hangings inside your shelf. So what are you, trolls with embroidered? My mother-in-law wants a purse with embroidered trolls. And <laughs> Jeff Chandler. Well, there you go. Everyone is just loving the troll thing. I don't know if I get it, but they are cute. They are really cute. So let's go back to our rectangle and I'm going to pull this out. And the first time when I did this, obviously I didn't have anything to work on here. I'm kind of copying what I did, um, but I kind of guessed and it was too big. So I just, because it's a, a working file, I just kind of, you know, tucked it in a little bit and made it fit. So it doesn't even matter. And then I put the design on it. So for this one, let's make it a little different. So I'm just in node mode and I'm just gonna kind of bring it in a little bit. It could be, um, that would be fun. A crazy quilt. Wouldn't that be fun? Let's do control Z, control Z and control Z. I said Z instead of Z. Bad Canadian. What I wanted to do was smooth. Yeah, that, um, 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 um. just kind of trying to see if I can change it a little bit. So smooth, smooth. That almost looks like a trailer or a sunshine or something. Uh, that might be okay. I might have to squish it down a little bit. And then you can create your triangles. What I'm going to do so we can see this better because I'm going to uh, leave it for a few minutes while I play around and decide what I want to do. I'm going to right click and I'm going to convert it to complex fill. That way you guys can see it better too. If I want to make any changes, I can go back into node mode and do it that way. So I'm going to leave the size. Uh, you could check. Yeah, it's a little bit too big. So let's make it a little bit smaller. And again, because it's not a stitch file, you don't have to worry about it now. There we go. You can squish it down because this is the native working file that I'm working on. So I want to, what do I want to do? No, utility, create outline. There we go. Boom. It's out a little bit. Actually, that looks really cute. Hmm. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. What about a troll mug rug? Yeah, I could do that. Put googly eyes on it. I have a drawer full of googly eyes. Thank you very much. And if I see something that needs googly eyes, like my 10 needle machine, 
I will add the googly eyes. I, I do that stuff. All right, whoops, let's pull it back there. And so you guys can see it, I'm gonna convert to complex fill. Now, if you make your designs you know, bigger, you can add detail to it. But this, this guy is a little bit small. You can, I would advise to change the angle. So why don't we do that? We don't want, you know, complex fill or tatami stitches uh, and then put something on top of it. That part's okay, but you don't want the stitches going the same way or it'll kind of blend kind of in a weird way. It's kind of weird. So let's go here and node mode and I'm going to move the stitches up and down because I think that uh, it's small so you have to be careful with stuff. There you go. Okay, so let's make a design. Should we do the flying geese kind of one maybe? Oh, all right. Where'd my triangle go? Well, that's because this guy is... So right click and order, uh, control shift and bracket. Oh, wrong. Oh, I did the outside. Jeepers creepers, there it is. We just need these two swapped out. So that's why, because the triangle is still there. You can see that it's still there. Um, but it's behind, so you can't see anything that's behind in real life. So it's kind of the same thing. You've got to move it around order. So, um, forward one. And look, we can see our triangle. Cool. So I am going to play around with this and maybe get some kind of a pattern. Let's see. I don't know. It doesn't have to be triangles. You can do like nine patch squares and stuff if you wanted. Or you could do wedge pieces like I did uh, a mug rug with that. It, pretty cool. Let's try it. Just as I'm saying it, let's try it. So rectangle like this. We don't want it too big. And you can't see that because it's in yellow. It's there though. Where is it? Is it not there? It's not there. My mouse is a sad, sad mouse. There we go. Now y'all can see it, right? And I want to, um, yeah, that should probably be good. We might have to make it a bit smaller. And we can also make it a bit wider. And let's go to node mode and let's zoom right in here. We're going to add some extra nodes. So first of all, we want one here. So add point and we're going to make it a line so it's square and we can pull it up like that and then the wedge kind of style kind of angles in. So literally all we have to do is just kind of make it an angle. Look at that. How cool is that? That is very cool. So make sure your points a line and these points align so it looks pretty good and uh, boom <laughs> I'm pretty happy with that so easy you guys are gonna see shapes everywhere and you'll realize how fun and easy it is to make your own embroidery designs like out of nothing you don't have to use clip art it's fun so these black ones are the angle pieces. So we're going to change the angle on it and click apply. Do we like that? Sure. And let's pick a different color. What do we pick? Uh, something bright, red, because we want it to see. So just by fiddling around, I had no plans in my head about this one. But I think that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty cool indeed. So let's try, um, I always click on the wrong one. Make a Dresden plate. Yeah, that was kind of the idea. I think it'll work. So uh, let's duplicate, control D, and then we have our nice thing here. We can put a couple of them. I'm not gonna spend too long on it, but you guys will see how easy it is to do. And I think it is a lot of fun. I'm having, I can't believe I did the wedges. I can't believe I didn't think of wedges. I just use 
triangles. Jeez. Beth Price just shared on Facebook. Let's get some more viewers for Soon Dawn. Thank you so much. That's what we need. If everybody um, that watches shares on their own timeline even, it'll make a huge difference. Um, the sharing makes a huge difference in the amount. I did an Anita Good Design video um, of, I think it was one of the books, and it got seven, seven or 8,000 views on it because someone shared it. And I think they shared it in another Anita Good Design group. And I was like, wow, that's pretty darn amazing if you ask me. So all I'm doing here, actually, I'm going to go back to red. So all I'm doing here is just strategically placing uh, the the wedges here for my Dresden plate. And you want this part and that part to match up. I'm going to have to move it around. See, there's a gap there. We don't want the gap. And pull it down a little bit. Mm, I want to make that one a little bit shorter. So I'm just trying to kind of copy a quilt. Don't worry about the bottom. We'll deal with the bottom. Isn't that cute? I think that's cute. So I'm just going to take this one. Where is it there? Yeah. And I am going to control C, control V uh, to make a copy. And then because it's at the right angle, I should be able to just flip it and no. Alrighty. Uh, nothing ever works, but we'll make a different shape. I think it's, oh, that's because I missed one. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Okay. Move aside, pick the purple one. And getting way ahead of myself, aren't I? It happens. It happens. There we go. We can see the colors there. I don't know what I was doing. Control C, Control V, and there's one there. Take it over and uh, flip it, and this one will go perfectly. I missed one is what the problem was. Now this guy that I flipped isn't quite right, but we're getting we're getting down to it. So what do you guys think of my uh, Dresden quilt piece, whatever, fan or whatever you want to call it? Big thanks to everyone who was sharing. Yes, thank you. Share, share, share. Dresden quilt? Yeah, something like that. Now what I would do to make it look a little bit better, I would slightly change the angles on these to match, you know, basically the direction. So put it from move over there, move over top to bottom, and then we'll click on um, this one and we'll do the same thing. And it'll kind of give it just a little more edge, a little more edge. See, the angle is just slightly different and it'll look great. So those are just little details that makes them look different. So I think that's cute. You would go on and shorten them and move them um, and color them. I think you want it a bit closer on here. And then you can either remove underlying stitches or just uh, leaving them. Oh, Peggy, that's a great idea. It would be great for making a turkey. So come Canadian or American Thanksgiving, that's what we can do. Remember, it's just a rectangle. That's That's what I think is the coolest part. It's just literally a rectangle and I added a couple of points and moved a couple of points and that's it. And I think, you know, you guys could be extremely creative um, just by playing around with shapes. Just get the idea in your head and uh, go for it and do it. So that's two options for the quilt. I, I don't know what this is, but I kind of like it. Control C, control V, and slide it over, and we're going to flip it. There we go. That should fit in nicely. Make sure you have overlaps. And for something like this, here's a big time hint. For something like this, look, the uh, jump stitch goes across. I would make the end point on this purple one here, and then because I'm going to put a border on it, then you can make a running stitch here and have this purple one start here. 
And then if you had, you know, you could probably fit two more in there. That's what would work and do the same thing for the red. And then when the satin stitches go on around it, uh, it'll cover everything up, but that's a great way to eliminate your jump stitches and to make one color stitch out from beginning to end. So that ended up being quite fun. I'm going to put this guy back. I am going to delete this one and we'll just leave it as a design like no other. We can hang it on the wall above our uh, vases, vases. I think I say vase, vase. Yes, vase. I have no idea. It's either one or the other. Now we're kind of building a wall. I, I think a wall, a designer wall. So, okay, let's look at our plant. Uh, because it's a working file, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see the detail work. And this is way easier than it looks. Now there's a little space between there, but that's okay. Are there, let me pause, take a drink, try putting a triangle in each corner. Yeah. Draw, what I would do is pull out a whole bunch of shapes and then piece it together. I think that would be cool. Misha, it looks like stained glass. Hey, yes. You know what? All you'd have to do is put some black uh, running stitches in between or silver and it would look like that. That's awesome. That's awesome. See how much fun you can have with shapes? I mean, it's easy. Oh, that's better. That's better. So rectangle. This one here is a rectangle. This is more of a square and we adjust it. Believe it or not, this is a rectangle and I just made a few adjustments. And of course, this is um, just an oval. So let's reconstruct this uh, with our shapes. So rectangle, I'm on. So I'm going to do a rectangle. It doesn't have to be the same as the other one. I'm just having it there to show you guys. Now I'm going to overlap a little bit on this one. So I'm just going to pull it out and make it match a little bit. I can always make this smaller. And then I am going to click on this one. Actually, we could turn this one into satin stitches. So convert to satin. Yes, we can. We'll make a red pot because why not? And we'll go and adjust the nodes. So that's all it is for the pot. How easy is that? match it up, match it up. Isn't that fantastic? I might tuck that one back a little bit more. I don't know, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Line up with your grid. As I said, it's easier to do that way. Convert to complex fill and we have a red pot. I like uh, I like the overlaps. Um, I would probably overlap a little bit more. I have the 3D on. If you don't have it on, um, you can see how big your overlap is easier. But it's easier for you guys to see this. So let's go ahead and do the rest. So I like this. This may be a little bit thicker because the base is that. Okay, make sure they don't split. That's fine. And let's do this. So if you can't draw a curve or you just want to keep to what we're doing, let's do this. And then let's switch over to an ellipse and we're not going to hold down the control key. We are going to make an ellipse like an oval, a sideways, sideways oval. It seems so easy when you do it. Yes, yes, you can do anything. It's all about shapes. It's just a completely different way of creating your own design. And I love it. I, I When I come up with things, I'm like, yes, you could round off the edges if you wanted to. Sure. Remember, this is, I've made this quite a bit bigger, but when it's smaller to fit in there in the shelf, 
uh, you won't notice it. So you can if you want, but I, I didn't find it necessary. So let's see, we want it to curve. So what do we do when we want a curve? Let's add a curve to it, a curve line, and we're going to line it up, right click, add point, and then we're going to move this one here. And then we're going to move this one here and uh, voila, we have a plant. We can pull it out a little bit. How cool is that? Super easy. Don't worry about the top because we're going to cover it up with leaves. How easy is that? Yeah, I think that's pretty easy. I curved mine quite a bit at the end, but again, you couldn't, you couldn't tell. Now it isn't perfect. I don't want it to be perfect. So convert to satin stitches. And how about we make it a healthy color of green? And uh, I think that looks great. Now it isn't perfectly, you know, the width isn't perfectly the same, but again, when you put it on there, you won't be able to notice anything. It's just fine. So now we're gonna do these simple but awesome leaves and you won't believe how easy it is to do. So there's a couple ways of doing it. So let's see, we will right click. There's a couple ways of doing this because we're using shapes. Now I'm gonna make satin stitches. And of course the satin stitches are gonna split because you can only do them so long. Split satin stitches are great if your program does it automatically this one does automatically you might have to set up your settings to do that uh that's awesome because you know your machine is going to stitch it now what i'm going to do here is a slice tool now let's see whoops see i love how that pulls down right there and we're going to slice and dice and that didn't work at all did it mm, why because it's only for the outline shapes. So let's do that again. If you run into that, that's what the problem is. There we go. Now let's do this and you guys will see that it'll work just fine. There we go. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. And now let's convert to satin. And voila, see how easy that was? I think it's awesome. How about we make it a shade of green? And how about we click on it first and then make it a shade of green? And we can make some copies of it. So uh, control D and you get your little cross and we're just gonna stamp out some leaves. Now these are all exactly the same size. I wouldn't make them too much bigger. Remember, I am at the bigger size. However, you can make them smaller. And there you go. We'll put, I want to turn it a little bit more. And this is how I came up with this. It's like, cool. Why not? I'm going to put the bigger ones at the top because that's, I think, where they would be. It doesn't have to be too fancy or anything. I thought it was a really cute addition. Now we want to cover up the top part with one of them. So make sure the satin stitches cover up like that. Let's see. It's like Jack and the Beanstalk. I am going to, I just thought of something that would be really funny to do on it. So I'm going to make this one medium and there. So shapes, easy, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, as my children would say. Now I wanna check something in the symbols. I wasn't going to do any symbols, but yeah, there it is. Uh, I just wanted to do a little addition to it. See how big he is. Oh, I gotta pull it out. Oh, I could make him as big as I want. There we go, what do you think? We will just put that guy right there. It is an ant or a bug and he's crawling on it. How about we make him black? There you go. He wouldn't uh, select him again. Why am I not selecting things? I don't know. Well, red ant, why not? So I'm going to group this because it makes it easier to fiddle about with it. Group. 
And voila, I think the second one looks better than the first. Now I just worked on it a bit bigger so you guys can see, but there's no reason why you can't make it uh, even bigger than that. Just, you know, make the leaves. You could, what you could do is take this part, so the dark green part, and bring it up and around and around and go like that. So whatever you want, whatever strikes your fancy, uh, I think that's cool. Now that does not look good, people. That does not look good. Why doesn't that look good? Because it's completely out of proportion. It needs to be a bit smaller. So let's put this in the middle and one, two, three, maybe, yeah. I like it. I like it. Control C, Control V, and move it over. And you could space it with your spacing tools if you wanted, or you could do it by eye. Let's bring this back down. And uh, we have a pretty fancy setup. That's, uh, I think that, <laughs> I added more to it, and I love it. I love it, absolutely. Um, now, this is just obviously a letter. I just thought it would be a really cute addition. You know how you make those oversized letters. Uh, but you don't have to. You don't have to do that. You can do, uh, you know, more pigs at the top. I don't know. You don't have to water them often so they forgive you, Cindy King. Oh, yeah, the fake plants. Yep, here. We do that here because uh, we don't have much of a sense of time in any way. We lose track of time. A week can fly by like a day, and we kill the plants. So we don't do that anymore. There we go. Perfect. I changed the color. You can coordinate all the colors. I'm not sure which vase I, look, uh, I like better. I do like this plant, and I do like it a touch bigger. So, a lamp. Now, a lamp, do you think that would be difficult? Nope, nope. I'm going to write that down, though, because that's something we could easily do. Um, you could do, uh, you know, I didn't even leave any room for books. So, <laughs> you could add, so remove some of all this stuff, and you could add your books either going this way or that way. Now it's kind of small, so I think you'd have to be careful with the detail work, but you can add the books on it. So I think we have made a really nice, a really nice looking design here. Just for fun, this was for fun, triangles, so flying geese, whatever this is, uh, I'm gonna call it a stained glass window because why not a knickknack shelf display case it can be anything you want but remember to pick up the shelf design it's um beautifully designed and carved thank you don and uh just work on filling it up i can't wait to see your homework it's awesome whiskey cabinet for these days lately yeah i know i know it's kind of the world is kind of weird right now Suzanne Shep, thank you very much. Thank you for the cute pair, too. I love them. Now, does anyone have any questions? I, I hope you guys like this. Um, I can't see how many people are watching with us. Can anyone give me an idea of how many people are watching? Yes. Oh, your 18-year-old daughter is in Guatemala. Yeah. Are you Canadian or American? Because the Canadians are getting home from Guatemala, the Prime Minister said. So, um, hi from France. Hi, I've been to France. I loved it. 76 people. Well, that's okay. That's fine. How big is the shelf? It's going to fit into a 6x6 six six hoop. It's just, it's just a bit over 5x5. Five five. So, yeah, kind of... Let me see. I can tell you exactly what this one is because I didn't adjust it because it's a stitch file. So I'm not gonna, not gonna. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Uh, 
so yeah, it's almost six by six. Now, obviously I have made it bigger by adding stuff. So, um, I hope you guys had fun. And now this will give you some fantastic ideas. Don't forget to leave room for some books <laughs> and we're going to continue on working with shapes, not necessarily a shelf, but I just think it is so much fun to do with a bookshelf. I, I, I just really have a lot of fun. So thank you to everyone who donated. We really appreciate it. Please, everyone, keep safe. Krista MacArthur, yes. Okay, if um, if you didn't, I heard the Prime Minister, Pierre Trudeau, Pierre Trudeau, Justin Trudeau, um, that they're sending a plane to Guatemala. I don't know when but uh, to pick up Canadians um, there. So uh, I think that's cool. Everyone, stay safe. Um, protect everyone. Stay in the house. Embroider. You know, go on the OML Embroidery University Facebook group. Ask questions. Maybe we can do some extra stuff. You know, we can do what we want and keep busy. Let me know if anyone's bored because there's a lot of stuff we can do. We're here just doing our thing, but be safe. Keep your family safe. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Say bye, Don. Bye, Don.